So welcome to the fifth episode of my podcast, which actually has a name now. And finally, Gina's Excellent Encounters. In this podcast, I try to find interesting people uh, and talk to them about a topic which is close to their heart. And today with me is Emily. Hi, Emily. Hello. And Kim. Hi, Kim. Hello. So, and our topic today is adoption, which is a topic you don't really often hear about, at least if you're not uh, adopted or s yourself. Uh, so, what I know about this is that I was married to a Swedish woman. That's why I live in, in Sweden now. We are not married uh, anymore, but back then she had a daughter who was two years old and her father, he lived in Stockholm, which is like about 500 kilometers uh, away from here, Gothenburg, where she lived. And so, so I kind of slipped into the father role because I was the, the male in, in the family. So, and yeah... I still have a lot. Uh, we we meet each other quite a lot, and we st we still. Are. I'm friends with the mother, uh, so and um, yeah, it it works quite well. But that's how, uh, what I know about adopt something like adoption because I didn't adopt her. So so from the other side, basically. But you guys, you you Emily have mm. been adopted, and yep. you came. Uh, been living in a foster care family or yes what do you call it so but perhaps uh, we start with introducing uh, so int please introduce yourself emily uh, i'm emily i'm 29 i was born in south korea and adopted to sweden when i was three months old okay quite early and you kim yes uh, my my name is kim and uh, i'm uh, 35 years old and i uh, was born in gothenburg and uh got put into foster care when I was uh, a year old mm -hmm. and uh, was ad adopted to a family in uh, Lerum, which is uh, two miles outside of Gothenburg. But have you been adopted or just put into the family? So yeah. Uh, is there a difference? Yeah, there is a difference because they don't, they, they never adopted me because okay. uh, there is um, a family who takes care of foster care care kids mm -hmm. uh, gets paid okay and uh, if they adopt the kids they don't get paid so there is see. no interest <laughs> in that uh, okay i guess yeah we will come later to it i have yeah. here a list which of topics which we will try to to go through so uh you emily mm -hmm. you've been adopted yeah yeah exactly uh but in in you you been adopted to Stockholm as far as I know? Yeah, I just came, I came to Stockholm first mm -hmm. and then I moved when I was 16 to Gothenburg. Okay, on your own or with the f with your family? Uh, on my own. Okay, okay. But with a boyfriend. Okay. Who yeah. I'm not currently with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, great. Uh, what do you work with? Uh, technical support, just yes. over the phone. So people call you when they yeah when doesn't something work. does not work <laughs> and they do not know how to fix it uh, and you tell them have yeah. you tried turning it off and on yes again? that is actually <laughs> very true nice <laughs> and you Kim your occupation yeah I'm a refrigeration mechanic okay so what so I um, fix uh, people's refrigerators and mm. um, uh, yeah, uh, stores uh, make sure they have their cold yeah 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 and i heard you fix tractors also yeah <laughs> in a tractor today there is uh, air condition mm -hmm. because uh, the season is a lot shorter and it's during the high summer uh, in back in the days it was in september you harvested so it was oh. uh, oh. needed but since you have a lot of better crops and better insect pesticides and mm. then you need ac in your Mm, air condition mm, in your I did not know that. Yeah. So it's for the person who sits in the tractor. Yeah, and I work in a firm uh, in a, a place called Skaraborg and okay. it's a really really rural area mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, farms. Ah, cool. So yeah. my main customers is 
farms. Farmers, okay. Yeah, and they they need heat pumps and you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm driving there. Yeah. Is it interesting? <laughs> yeah. It... Yeah. Come. Yeah. I come from uh, Gothenburg, oh, so yeah. it's uh, very different. Yeah. I, I worked in Oslo, and uh, well. It's something else. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> and you live there with your children? Yeah. I uh, moved out there, met the woman, and we. she was from there. So we okay. And created. you have two, two boys. <laughs> I have two boys. and uh, How old are they? Three and four. Ah, nice. <laughs> and uh, no adoptions. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so... Perhaps you could tell you as your story, so yeah. how how you got into this, Kim? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. My um, uh, I was put in foster care when I was a year old. Mm -hmm. It was determined determined before I was born because my oh. parents were, uh, yeah, they were hippies mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, drug addictions and uh, problems. So. Yeah. Uh, the foster service decided that early and um, yeah so uh, i went to this family in uh, lerum okay. and um, which is basically just outside of gothenburg here. yeah exactly and um, uh, they had it was a it was a family who uh, uh, had a lot of foster care children okay because uh, yeah and it's a lot like that because uh, everyone else I know, most of them, they uh, they been in families where they have a lot of foster care family okay. uh, because uh, they don't have many families. Oh, okay, so that's why. Okay. Yeah, one of the main uh, issues. No, no reasons uh, they do it is because there is a lot of money. There is, you get paid. Do you know how much? Yeah, back in my days it was like six, seven thousand a month. So like seven hundred dollars, space or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, so per child, I guess. Yeah, but today I think it's a lot more. Oh. I heard, uh, well, I read the numbers, but that's like twice that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but it's like thirty years later now so <laughs> yeah so it's uh, like everything is uh, exactly. twice as yeah. Uh, yeah and i mean a child costs a lot of money that's let's be honest yeah but there, there is there is of course uh, idealistic families and yeah. uh, christian families that does this because they really want to help okay then there is the a large group of families that uh, they uh, they need money mm -hmm. and they see this as an opportunity to Okay. Economically make things work. And uh, yeah, so normal families don't do this. They have a mm. lot big problem finding families. Yeah. That's why they stuff as many kids as they can in each. So home. if you find some family which is uh, which wants to take someone, then you try to. Yeah, yeah. They work very hard to make sure they take more mm. children. Mm, I see. And, um, so how many children were you in your foster family? Uh, some were just there a few years and some went and go and you know but uh, at most I think we were like 10 or something mm, that's a lot yeah and uh, my family they uh, they have they sold groceries at mm -hmm. the market mm -hmm. outside and uh, without the foster care family that would never have worked I see. So it wasn't like mm. uh, I, I can. Uh, it, it was. It wasn't optimal. Yeah. But uh, when I think about it for myself, I had the same parents from I was one year old till I was grown up. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad for that. So when did you leave leave the family? How old were you? I was twenty. Twenty. Okay. But I I kept in touch yeah. because it was my mother and father yeah. then i also had contact with my biological father okay so yeah that's uh, irregular well, okay okay so how about you um well i mean uh, adoption back in the day <laughs> because mm -hmm. i feel so old now <laughs> <laughs> because nowadays when you do adoption from 
international adoptions. You go to the country, educate yourself about the country and the culture, mm-hmm. and then bring the child back with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my day, you were, the child was just sent to you, like a package. Oh, so... so yeah, so they just put children on a plane, and the stewardess just took care of you during the flight, and then they just came and picked you up in, in the airport. So we have pictures from when my mother... Okay. In Sweden, who came and picked me up in the airport. Okay. So yeah, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've had the same parents all my life in that sense. Mm. Uh, I know um, pretty much a lot about my biological family compared to other people I've talked to who are adopted from South Korea as well, mm-hmm. um, because most children are just either found on the street or just in orphanages. Uh, I was actually, they handed me into an orphanage and then I had a foster mother for just like a month or something. Okay, and yes. then I was adopted away. Oh, I see. So, so do you know why they had to give you away? Yeah, they were. I think there were four people living in a one bedroom apartment. So, okay. <laughs> so they thought this would be the best, the best. for me mm. and them, I guess. Mm. Okay, uh, interesting. So it's just money, money a money thing. Mm. To save money or do they did they get money? No, no, I don't think they got any money. I'm not oh. sure actually, but I just think they just felt we can't take care of an, another mouth. We okay. just can't. Yeah. We don't have enough money. We don't have the resources uh, because uh, I was the youngest. And mm-hmm. but funny thing is, that after me, another child came along and wow. they kept her. But I guess they had a better economic situation. Okay, that. Hmm. interesting. Uh, have you? Met this no, young, younger sister? No, yeah. I haven't met them, but I have. I have um, sent letters, and they've sent letters and things to me, um, and pictures, of course. So, um, yeah, I look very much like my older sisters. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. it's very creepy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim, perhaps because you've not been adopted could you explain the difference between like a foster care family and being adopted like emily yeah like um, my parents had uh, problems and social services Mm -hmm. decided this so uh, there that's a difference i guess um and um like uh, my parents got paid so there there was this yeah uh, yeah 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 Yeah, and uh, i to tell you something, the family I come to wasn't good. They had some issues, alcoholic problems and mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, well, a lot of parents, a lot of kids grow up with that, but that's not optimal for putting children. Especially if you have like no. eight Ten children. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. So, but uh, at yeah, at the same time, I understand that it's very hard to find families willing to take in children Mm -hmm. so i'm at the same time i'm very humble because uh, i had a family and uh, Mm -hmm. i uh, thanks to the swedish educational system i have an education and a job and everything i mean yeah i am very humble to live in this great country Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah it is a great country (laughs) (laughs) but uh uh so if they would adopt you, they would not get any money then later. Yeah, exactly. But because it, then you are like a yeah, their yeah, child. Their child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so that's basically the the main difference is in a foster family you are they just take care of just mm. they take care of you. But in a when you get adopted, then you they have all the legal obligations and mm. everything yeah. like with a, a yeah and they have to pay yeah. when adopting okay yeah and also uh, if uh, my parents real parents would you know straighten up their lives they could come and claim me mm-hmm. and stuff like that so that that's a huge ah. difference too i think oh, very I rich uh, families mm-hmm. uh, in in my guess or uh, opinion or is that richer families adopt from far further away somebody who can never be mm. taken away from them mm-hmm. because that's their child that's mm. like something else uh, a foster family that's like uh, but but there is very idealistic families i have two uh, biological uh, siblings mm-hmm. and both of them got into really good families that mm-hmm. did it because they want to help and uh, you know uh, but you so, all got split up. 
We got split up. Okay. Uh, but one, eller, both live fairly uh, close to Gothenburg. So. Are you still in contact with them? Yeah, I have good contact with my brother. Uh, my sister, uh, uh, no, not very good. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's also because uh, her family didn't want us to have mm-hmm. connection to her oh, or that. Okay. So it's... Uh, it's a big world of you know a lot of people yeah thinking this think that yeah. and you know uh so it's complicated mm-hmm. and uh, and your siblings from the foster family yeah i have uh, two sisters who i regularly mm-hmm. uh, do things with like yeah, yeah. christmas and uh, nice. stuff like that so <laughs> and uh, then there is others who you know yeah. You lose contact because you're not very like. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I guess when, when you've been there like for 18, no, 19 years. The, so, but uh, when someone is just for a short time period of time, they don't get that attached to the family. No. Mm. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, factors that mm. play in when like their own child, uh, children, they were like, 17 when i got there so oh, i don't I really grew up with them no, at all obviously <laughs> no so no but you know uh, uh, i had a pretty good childhood uh, mm. I, even if they uh, they had some alcoholic issues you know okay emily you mm? told us that you had uh, uh, biological siblings but i think yeah. you have also yeah, I have a sibling here who is not biological, but I mean, we grew up together, so mm. she's my sister. But she comes from a whole other family in South Korea as well. She doesn't look like me at all. Oh. <laughs> no, she really doesn't. No one has ever mistaken us for sisters. Oh, so, so, so you've both been adopted. Did they have yeah. their own children before that? No, after? they couldn't have. Okay, That's okay. why they adopted. Um and she is six years older than me, mm-hmm. and she got here when she was four or three, three or four. So it's quite a big difference okay, in yeah. experience getting yeah. to Sweden because, I mean, she could talk and things like that. So yeah. she didn't really understand. She had, hadn't seen snow and things like that. <laughs> so yeah. it was very different for her coming to Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you said uh, you didn't li- look like your sister mm. because that is something I remember from when I was like three years old. Mm. I looked at my mother and father, and they are like really big, uh, brown haired, like China, mm. uh, and I'm like skinny, blonde, blonde. <laughs> and uh, I remember that being very, you know. Uh, it put deep thoughts into a small child like Mm. why don't I look like mom and dad and uh, yeah Mm. Yeah, I guess you yeah for me yeah of course Uh, but for me we've never been like they've never done a big reveal like you're adopted because I've always known Mm -hmm. because I don't look like anyone in my family pretty Mm -hmm. much my sister is I'm very light skinned and she's pretty much pretty dark skinned Mm -hmm. uh, even though we're from the same country uh, and it's just uh, you just know that we're not really blood related and you can just look at them but yeah and you so yeah it's always been something there when p- kids in in school talk about who they look like and things like mm-hmm. that and you really don't have anyone to compare to so it's yeah. always been kind of strange i guess yeah i guess so so i have here a small list uh Let's just speculate because we don't know <laughs> this stuff. But so we only know about your family. So, but I have here. So, why would uh, someone give their children away? We've talked about uh, uh, you, Emily, mm. uh, about the, basically the economical s- situation, mm. and for you, uh, with the uh, the problems they had, social services. Yeah, yeah. But I guess that's a really good thing that we have social services. Yeah, agreed. And uh, yeah. So, 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 who then adopts children? So, what what kind of people are those? Uh, for the foster family, we talked a bit about the <laughs> incentive for the money, or like. The Christian families who do it for for the sake of goodness, I guess. Mm. 
uh, but uh, if you adopt a child like your parents adopted you mm. they didn't they couldn't have their own children yeah uh, but they are also uh, like i know uh, like stars like madonna they adopt children why why do they do it <laughs> yeah. oh God, Madonna. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. she has Angelina like seven children. Angelina, Angelina Jolie yeah. and her army. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> they can't play football against it. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I think it stands because I know. I mean, a lot of celebrities go to these countries, mm. like poorest Africa, if we can be that yeah. stereotypical, and and they see all like the, the misery. misery i guess and they just decide i need to do something and this is their way of trying to mm. fix it instead of just throwing money at it directly i guess mm. i probably they probably do that too <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but i guess sometimes they uh, so i don't know how it is but if if for example your mother and father die mm. then you can get adopted by your by the brother of your parent or something like that that's Hap does it happen sometimes or do you know or is it like was it back in the days and nowadays it's like uh, this anonymous yeah. thingy hey, well uh, if my sisters would something would happen to them mm. i would adopt their kids so i'm pretty sure that happens but does it work like that or do you have to or basically can you <laughs> yeah i mean i think yeah, you, you probably can, can you can probably say to them that uh, i have a connection to okay. them and probably get okay to do it unless there is a problem with you otherwise like you oh. don't have a job and you don't have a place to live mm -hmm. it might be hard to adopt your kids yeah but mm -hmm. but if there is no uh obstacles that way i th don't think they They yeah, so would. I don't think they will deny you because mm. they really need that help. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, because social services in Sweden have huge problems. It's mm. not very simple for them to find families. And mm. stuff. So what? What would be the if if they can't find a, a foster family or someone to adopt the kid? What, what orphanage? Orphanage. Okay. Are there many kids in orphanages? Do you know? No. Yeah. I <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't know. Good okay. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess people like me who get married uh, to someone who also already has a kid, they sometimes or perhaps even often adopt the kid. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. No idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, uh, you. Uh, You did know about your uh, biological parents, and you are in contact with them. But sometimes I hear, like from movies and so on, mm -hmm. that kids don't know how uh, is is this. So, who decides if the kid ha uh, can or cannot know that? Um, I'm not sure about like the rules and things like that because just with me, it's because they actually. Uh, did the responsible thing and brought me in and actually mm. signed papers and their information so I have their name and their ages at the time and mm. things like that uh, and why and other things mm. uh, but other children I know I've talked with that I think most people really don't know because they're usually just left somewhere they're just left on the stoop or on the streets and found okay so they don't, really just don't know okay I, I guess it's later on uh, also a difference mm -hmm. for yourself if you know your roots or if you just if it's just completely unknown. Yeah, I mean, with uh, at least internationally adopted people, I think you're you're either you want to know more or you really don't want to talk about it at all. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's it's really black and white in that sense. It's usually not like in the middle. I don't know. It's usually I really want to know where I really mm -hmm. just don't want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. Okay, then I had read about embryo adoption. <laughs> mm. This is also like, a, I guess that's when when a woman can't get, doesn't have their uh, her own eggs, and then they adopt. Uh, are they use uh, is are they using a poor woman's body to uh, oh, oh, give birth to like the that. child? Okay, well that's a surrogate. Oh, sorry, okay. okay. Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? 
Uh, I don't well, know. Embryo, uh, <laughs> because if it's eggs a woman needs, you can just buy them pretty much. Okay. I think. Because there are, like, you can donate your eggs. Mm. And you as you can donate sperm and things like that. Hmm. I didn't so know. I think you can donate eggs. I'm not really 100% sure, but I think you can. Yeah. But surrogate uh, motherships are, mm. uh, of course, a, a kind of uh, adoption. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, well... Uh, but uh, let's talk about what is a surrogate uh, mother or how does this work? Do well, you know? it's uh, like uh, if me and my wife can't have her children mm-hmm. because her body isn't uh, functional for that, okay. I could ask my sister mm-hmm. if she could help me and mm-hmm. carry the child. And then she gives birth to it. Okay, That's like the most positive way. Then there is like factories in uh, India and poor countries where women just live and, you know, give birth to rich people's kids oh, I see. so it's uh, w- uh and uh well uh i i read a lot about this and uh mm-hmm. like uh adopted children and children in foster care they are like four times more likely to commit uh, suicide than mm-hmm. ordinary children so there is something that's not really uh well optimal about it mm-hmm. and uh foster care children have like twice the chance to uh, go into abusing drugs mm. and similar things but that doesn't apply to adopted children at all mm. so but that's probably because their parents are richer or something yeah mm. but uh, yeah. surrogate motherships and children born from that mm-hmm. there isn't much but there is some studies that suggest that uh, it doesn't really work very well for those kids either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That they have a problem with uh, accepting that uh, they never been in their mother's womb. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, and uh, then there is others like insemination and you know EVF, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and uh, that. Uh, well, from what I read, it's not a problem at all, mm-hmm. because then you've been in the mother's womb, you just had some help getting there, and mm. okay. it's not a problem. A lot of <laughs> interesting <laughs> topics. Yeah, because I'm myself in foster care. I th- these kind of stuff, I I get very interested and uh, read a lot about. Mm. It, so. And you, Emily, is it for you like for him, or is it because you've been? No. I don't know. Is it different for you? <laughs> no, I find it interesting as well. I mean, you hear about it because um, in vitro, well, when you have a surrogate, because you see this is like a storyline in a movie mm-hmm. many times or a show. And because it's, as I've seen it, it's like you use one woman and only like her belly as a as an oven, but mm-hmm. it's still the genes of the parents, mm-hmm. just that she carries the child. Okay. Yeah. So it's still their child, their genes, their blood. Mm-hmm. So, but it's also then interesting that uh, if children that comes from a surrogate still feels like, well, this is my mother because she carried me, but mm-hmm. I have all the genes from my parents. Mm-hmm. So then we put, I guess, kids put more um, weight mm-hmm. in where they were born and what womb they came mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, uh, it's also when you look at it, uh, you have the genes from mm-hmm. both parents inside an, an another woman. Then your connection is the genes. That's the connection to the child, and that's very important. But when you adopt children from other countries, the genes doesn't matter at all. Mm-hmm. It's like, then it's a totally different perspective for mm-hmm. the children and connection. It's, it's all about family, mm-hmm. about raising. <laughs> and that's... Uh, yeah, I read that this is called parent infant infant system, and that the nature basically ensures some flexibility in the beginning when the child is really really small. Who who takes the role uh, of the parenting? Then yeah, I guess back in the days people died much more often, especially mm. women uh, in childbirth, mm. and then. Yeah, if that would be a big problem, then yeah, uh, I guess that would be a much bigger problem for the children later also. Mm. So some flexibility is as there, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, humans need to adapt to survive, so mm. 
Yeah. I mean, and also if you have two people who really want a child and can't have it another way, mm-hmm. I mean, they will adapt to that situation. They have put themselves in that situation. It takes time and money and effort to get a child through adoption, yeah. international adoption at least. Mm. I'm, I'm sure it's the same in domestic. So, mm. Is there a difference, do you know? In domestic, international? <laughs> yeah. Not sure. I'm guessing there is. I mean, there's not like a language barrier. You don't really have to educate yourself about another country, about the culture. Mm. So I'm I'm guessing it's a shorter and less uh, costly experience. I see. Yeah, most probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not sure though. So let's talk about the effects on the adoptees, like you two guys. So, uh, How is it being <laughs> <It's> <laughs> adopted? <awful. laughs> no. <laughs> do you f- think you feel any different, or? Yeah, I think I do. Mm-hmm. I think because I, I've all, you always struggle to fit in when you look very different. Okay, obviously for you it's yeah, because it's you very look Asian. <laughs> okay, the listeners can see you, but yes, you look. Well, they can Asian. imagine a South Korean woman. I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But that's okay. Then, uh, then but but I look like a, yeah. a, a like guy from Gothenburg. Exactly. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a difference. Mm. But yeah. But you probably still have the feelings, I guess, like I do. In that, uh, I mean, you have your parents and you've lived this up, but they haven't adopted you, but they're still your parents. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They. Um, Yeah, and uh, they died a few years ago, so uh, I had time, to, you know, to uh, uh, forgive and forget, well, not forget, but you know, mm-hmm. uh, put the past behind me, mm-hmm. because um, it, if I would look at it uh, objectively, I would rather grow up in a family with some alcoholic issues than mm-hmm. having to move to an orphanage and you know move around to different families. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so I'm happy, but you know, if I look at it how social services acted, mm. I I can get a little angry because they had proof from when I was eight years old that my uh, my father drank and mm. had uh, huge problems. So they should have done something, but they didn't. And uh, then when I was 18, my social service uh, uh, lady came and gave me t- uh, tapes with the uh, christian bibles and said uh, you have to forgive and okay. i was like okay. I, i was 18 years What? old and i was like it, it would have been better if you didn't show up yeah because like, is that I their job agree. to spread the <laughs> christian word yeah and you didn't bother doing your job mm. for the last 10 years so instead you tried to cover it up jesus Yeah, but at the same time, she probably didn't have some place to put me. Or, you know, it's, yeah, it would yeah. have been, um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's um, at some point you just have to leave that behind you. But mm. uh, when you read, you read about you. I don't. You remember that girl in uh, Yara that died in foster care? Mm. Yeah, mm. and. Uh, Because it, they had several complaints, and uh, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, then you get very angry because they they can't they have to fix this. I mean, if you take care of a child, you it's a huge responsibility, and you do a huge uh, uh, impact on the lives of everyone. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it can't be done like overstressed social workers who barely manage their job. You know. Mm. Uh, it, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So more money to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or restructuring or something. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, maybe in, if you look at history, uh, orphanage child pro- children probably has it better than ever. Also, that is true. So, uh, we, we shouldn't like yeah, say yeah. it's really bad. It's probably no, the best ever. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. But still, we don't need to to say yeah it's the best yeah. we have so we don't need to <laughs> make well, it better well there's always room for improvement yeah. So. yeah 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 you guys at least know your your biological parents so mm. i guess you have you know the medical history of your no no okay <laughs> straight no uh why why not no I, i really just don't know because my biological mother died and i don't know what she died from Okay. They didn't write that. They just said she died from a, a while of illness, kind of. 
And there's a big cultural difference. So you can't really ask anything you want to ask. Because I tried that and they mm-hmm. said, she gets very upset, please don't ask. So I just stopped. So I can't really mm-hmm. find so out you... if I don't do like a DNA test or something. Mm-hmm. How old was she? Uh, I think she was 57, 60 something. That's quite young. Yeah, and my mother here is dead as well. And she died at 62, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have two dead mothers. Uh, yeah, depressing thought. <laughs> But do you know about your biological father? Because you. No, uh, that's the also the funny thing, and I'm guessing there's a cultural difference here as well. Because I have never heard anything from him. It's always my sisters writing, and I they're see. older too. I have two older sisters. Ah, okay. But but they li- they know him. Yeah. First. Yeah, of course. Um, I guess I don't, I'm not really sure how their living situation is now because they have mm. children and they're married yeah. and things yeah, yeah. like that. Um, Life goes on. Yeah. Do they have Facebook? <laughs> no, I don't think because they don't know English. Ah, so ah, it wouldn't okay. work anyway. Yeah, it okay, okay. kind of works actually. Yeah, I know just... it works, but I wouldn't be able to compete. Are you? With it. Uh, because you don't speak. <laughs> no, I don't Korean. speak Korean so or write it. Korean. <laughs> Oh, yes. Should I tell them that? Just learn English. <laughs> It's spoken everywhere. <laughs> exactly. So how hard can it be? We are talking here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so have you been to South Korea yet? No. Uh, I've, I've, I've always thought about it, of course. Um, but it's always a very daunting thought. Mm-hmm. Because one minute, but it's usually when you really can't go. When you think, I really, really want to go. And now, uh, because before I've always had, a like, I guess a good excuse. I've never had, like, a stable job and therefore a good income. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now I do. And now I have time. I have vacation days I can take. Um, so now I actually can go. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, do I really want to go now? <laughs> it's like, do I want to see where I should have been brought up? Where, like, what school I might have gone to this Like a lot of feelings and thoughts going into that. And like if I meet my family, will we be able to communicate? Would I need an mm. interpreter? There's like oh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of Korean. No. no. So there's a lot of like the logistics, I guess, as, as yeah. well. And it's just the feelings. And actually, I was in South Korea and the, the language barrier is quite big. Mm. I thought... When I was in Japan, I thought, yeah, those Japanese, they really don't speak and much English. But in Korea, it was even worse. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sadly. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's a nice country to, to go. Mm, I bet. Uh, so yeah. the food is fantastic. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I've been there for two weeks, and we we went on one of those esports events, <laughs> yeah. which is super fun because it was they have it on TV also. Yeah, so you could see me on the national TV. Did you have a sign? Uh, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> but but the, they've been talking about because I I have dark hair, mm. so I don't look like a Swede. And with me was Ali, who is from uh, who, who is an Arab. Mm. But when they talked about us, so so they showed us, and they have l- like those commentators mm. who comment the game. But in the in during uh, the pause, they they show the the people who sit there, and yeah. when they showed us, then they talked some thing about sweden sweden oh and then we yeah because because we talked to the person who who owns the whole thing before mm. and he told them that we are from sweden mm. and so on so i don't know what they said but something about sweden and then here we are a arab <laughs> <laughs> and a pole <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was fun mm. <laughs> uh, let us talk about the effects on the biological parents. Kim, you you knew your father yeah. quite well, I guess? Yes, um, my uh, biological father, uh, when I was born, he stopped with everything that uh, had to do with his uh, addiction and mm-hmm. uh, and cleaned up his act. So uh, he, he was, um, when I was like seven or eight, he stopped smoking and... Uh, Later he stopped with coffee and at the end he was like a vegetarian, uh, yeah. And uh, that was because of me. And uh, Were you the youngest? Didn't you have, because you have 
Uh, my father only had one child. I see. My mother okay. had three children, and I, I was the oldest of those. And um, he he cleaned up his life, and you know uh, they said he was going to die when he was thirty because of his uh, addiction. Okay. But uh, he survived till he was sixty-four, mm. and they they also promised him that if he cleaned up his act, he would uh, get custody of me. Okay. But uh, since uh, he had taken a lot of damage to mm. the brain and uh, primarily his uh, balance and he had problems walking so he wasn't really fit to uh, mm. take care of a child so but uh, yeah i mean uh, he called once a week all mm. through my childhood and uh, came to visit once a month and uh, yeah till i was 18 mm. and then um then uh, we had uh, contact uh, after that and at the the last few years since i got children of my own mm. he uh, we talked like three four times a week so we yeah, became really close that's more than me and my father <laughs> yeah we <laughs> became like friends if you know what i mean mm. yeah 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 that's really nice yeah. that's really nice yeah yeah so uh did he talk to you about regret or something like that yeah he uh he blamed the government of course uh social services and he was really angry at them and you know uh, of course they took his child mm. even if he had you know problems and his uh, ex elder wife had uh, my mother had mm. problems you know yeah they were still my parents in their mind um sure. they, they never forgave the authorities and stuff they he, he never trusted uh, the authorities or the government or mm. anything at all you know uh but i mean who can blame him at at, at the same time it was his own fault yeah mm. and you know but uh, it's a deep wound to lose Absolutely. your child yeah. oh. Because he never chose that. Mm, okay. Yeah. So. But did he have any understanding of of he, the social services side? I guess. Yeah. He he he's, uh, he had a little uh, problem re uh, reasoning because mm. of his uh, drug addiction. Mm. So at times he, you know, you could get in a loop with him when you talk because he wasn't like moving on at all. Mm. But at points when you really reached the point. You know, he, he he like admitted that it, it was his own fault, and you okay. know, he, mm. he he probably wanted to do things differently. Mm. But you know, growing up in uh, the bad neighborhood in Sweden, you know, it's uh, it's not a good place. No, no. Mm. But where did he grow up? Also in those neighborhoods? Or? Yeah, in Angered um, Gordsten, mm. in uh, and it's like. Uh, these huge blocks where the poor people live yeah and uh and in turn his father mm -hmm. was uh, an alcoholic too mm -hmm. and you know had issues so yeah it, it, it's like that mm. at the yeah how about you do you have those problems i mean if you if the whole family had these problems yeah of course i have a, a predisposition to be in uh addiction yeah. of course both biological and you know my parents i grew up with too yeah. so i have to think about that very carefully and maybe at some point when i was like 26 27 mm -hmm. i was close but oh, okay. uh, i went away and uh and now i don't i drink like very seldomly okay but that's good uh, yeah uh, i i don't i i don't have any kind of problem that's mm. really nice yeah yeah um then the next thing on my list is the the effects on the adoptive parents because they are not the biological parents they take someone from outside even so it's a small child of mo most often i guess mm. but it's still there's still uh, a difference so emily i guess you've been adopted so yeah. and your parents only had you and your sister yeah not like in, in a foster family so mm -hmm. how, did you did your parents talk about this somehow not really i should say it's it's uh, 
No, I wouldn't say because it's always been very obvious in our family because we look so very different. Yeah. I mean, they're very, I mean, they look like Swedish people Mm -hmm. and we don't, me and my sister. Um, So it's never been something we've discussed in that because we really haven't had to. There's been no need for it. We've all known which is which. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess the effects on them, I'm not really sure to be honest, they've never really said anything about it. I don't think they got any like bad, any anyone saying anything bad about it. Mm-hmm. But they, you must have fulfilled their dream of becoming a family. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. You, you don't adopt unless you really want this, you know, core family thing. Yeah. At, so at, you have to be godsend to them. Well, I guess yes, but at the same time, uh, as with everything in human nature, you get used to it and it's just family in the end. So even, I guess, when I just came, it was like a miracle. Mm. But later on, I mean, when I actually knew what was going on and I can form memories and things, I I just remember it being like, I guess, these are my parents, I'm a child, I'm their Mm. child. It wasn't like, oh, she's so special. Uh, it was more other people in that sense that told me you don't look like us. Mm. But at least you weren't an uh, uh, accidental kid which didn't fit in right now because we don't have money and so on. So I guess they prepared f- for you, basically. Mm. Yeah. But that's also the, I guess, there's all, I mean, there's good and bad things with adoption because you can kind of pick and choose. Uh, what kind of kid you want? Uh, How I mean? Well, they they could say we don't want a disabled child. Okay, yeah. Uh, they can never guarantee what you actually end up with, what kind of child. But yeah, you can tick like a box. Okay, for that. Yeah, and um, and overall, when adopting from say East Asian countries, usually they don't send boys. Uh, they like to keep them okay. culturally. It's the thing. Mm. Uh, there have been a few boys sent, of course. Okay. Uh, but most usually you get girls. Mm-hmm. So you can tick like boy or girl, I guess both, uh, and things like that. So you can kind of, mm-hmm. like, and how old they are and things like that. Okay, okay. Okay, and how do you think your relationships to to your adoptive parents? Is it, I'm, I'm wondering if it's, somehow different than my relationship to my parents do, do you see them like like i see my parents or somehow different i you know. i guess that's kind of hard to, yeah. to answer since i don't know the mm. other side but i think I, i do think there is a difference mm. just because th- there's always this awareness that we don't look alike Mm. So I actually have, like, when I'm grown up now, because, you know, there's this stereotype of older men with some Thai mm. women in Sweden. Okay. So I'm always thinking, like, when I'm out with my dad, like, do they think I'm his girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, from Thailand. Yeah. 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 But you don't really look Thai, but yeah. No, no, no. But for, you know, for people who don't <laughs> yeah. really, yeah. I guess, yeah. can see the difference or have thought of it. Mm. Uh, but, but, and sometimes we have actually had said, I'm, I'm his daughter, I actually have had to say that yeah. not because there's been like an inappropriate mm. someone has been like oh blah blah blah, but it's just just to clarify mm. because it feels like they might think something else when we, but when you talk about them you just tell everyone like that's that are your parents and mm. nothing more yeah they're my parents i mean it's obvious we're not blood related yeah so. No, but I mean, when you talk to people w- mm. who don't see your father, I I never met your father. Mm. I don't know if he looks like you or not. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Well, usually as long as they know my name, since it's, it's a Swedish name, mm. they usually also tend to know that I'm adopted. Okay. So, uh, but sure, otherwise, because it usually comes down to my sister. Okay. And when I talk to my sister, they, they, they always ask, oh, is she adopted as well? Oh. Ah. So that's pretty much where it is. N- never with my parents, just my sister, I guess. Ah, interesting. And how is it for you, Kim? Because you had you, you talked a lot with your father, but do you see your uh, foster parents as parents or? Yeah, I. That's uh, <coughs> mom and dad is my foster parents, okay. and uh, well, uh, I uh, didn't look like them, mm. and uh, you know. It's uh, nobody ever came forward to us and said, 
Goy, boy, he looks like you mm. because I didn't. So, uh, you know, um, now that I have children on my own, yeah. everyone looks at my kids and say, wow, that's you. <laughs> and really, really uh, like yeah, you. yeah, so like mini me's. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I never had that myself. So mm. uh, it's. Uh, different but you know it's not the end of the world but it's mm. um it's a new experience so when you tell uh, when you tell to me based for example something about your parents are you talking about w your foster parents and how do i know or will i know or should i care <laughs> uh, now days uh, after they're dead oh. i say foster parents okay because uh, when they were alive i said mom and dad but okay. uh, now i said my foster parents because uh, uh, not because my relation to them changed or anything mm -hmm. but you know you have to be honest with how the situation was Mm -hmm. and uh, when I say my dad I, now I usually mean my biological father mm -hmm. so uh, yeah that changed when they died I can't ex fully explain why but okay. my relation to them changed with that mm. how about your siblings then yeah I was just gonna get to that it was probably because their real children Uh, their relation to me changed a lot when they went away so they become really okay. uh, uh, like. it took a really bad turn for the worse and uh, we don't speak today oh. so that's probably a part of it too mm. but uh, you know uh, I, I, I it was okay you know mm. Mm. because i hear you talking about your sister a lot Uh, but that's that's, that's my foster care system. Okay, that yeah. was also in foster care. Okay, okay, because it's yeah. I I guess I. But she is my sister. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I would never say foster sister yeah, about yeah. them. No, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are a rainbow split <laughs> family. You know, it's very. Uh, yeah, my brother. He has a uh, sister and brother. You know, they're yeah. my brother's brother. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, but I'm, I don't have any relation yeah. to them. You know, so it's uh, yeah. You just have to you know go with it. Yeah, I mean that can be good also. Yeah, so. I have a whole family of my brothers, yeah. sister and mother, father. You know, exactly. <laughs> and they are really kind and nice. They uh, are really nice people. Mm -hmm. When you told about uh, that people tell you that your children look like you, I had uh, <laughs> something like that also when when uh, Luna was really like three years old or something. Then an old woman came to us and we were just standing and she told us that she looks just like me, but she doesn't. No. <laughs> so people sometimes just uh, tell stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, had it had the bond between you, your siblings, uh, the foster siblings, changed uh, after your parents died, or is it depending on 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 who we are talking about? So, which of those? Yeah, ten, uh, it changed a lot with two of them, and um, uh, yeah. Um, It's like really complicated because uh, they, uh, if uh, it's simple, if people can't treat you like an adult and respect you, mm. you don't need them in your life. Mm. It doesn't matter if uh, yeah. you have some kind of connection because their parents took care of you. Yeah, and yeah. They got paid for that, so don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean. Yeah, yeah uh, I mean that happens also with with biological yeah. uh, siblings. So that's not nothing special. So. No, I, I no exactly. So uh, no, and that's what I want to point out. That even if they had some alcoholic issues, a lot of children grow up with that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, and as children, was different then, or so like, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another thing that made uh, my first 10 years a little special was that they were like uh, selling uh, vegetables mm. at the markets. So a lot of my childhood, I was, uh, 
you know at the market and mm. uh, playing with other kids that uh, had parents working there yeah uh, knallar we call them in sweden i don't know <laughs> a word in english for that well, but it's a traveling salesman uh, thing you know yeah. you put up your groceries sell for a day then you move on so it's uh, every day in a different place or basically no, uh, a couple of places where you yeah at times at times we went to new places and did stuff and you know um, then you went there and then you you know ran around like a little kid and then mm. you met other kids and, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know that's like um, yeah, yeah. It, it's a way of life and uh, uh, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that no no absolutely mm. not so how about you and your sister? So when you were children, how much older or younger? Eight years older. Oh, that's yeah, quite so that's older. quite a lot. <laughs> but my brother is ten years younger than me. Mm. So yeah, that's nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of either. course it happens. <laughs> yeah, but uh, did it change into adulthood? Uh, adulthood. Uh, so your relation to her, or is it basically? Well, like, I mean, like you know, from other people. I'm not really sure if it's that much dif- that much difference mm. because I mean she uh, she moved out much earlier of course and, and she married someone and she had mm. kids and things like that to take Where care does she of live? in Stockholm well okay. like a suburb of Stockholm okay yeah. so um and your father lives there also yeah uh, she lives like one hour from her mm. um but I I wouldn't say much changed in that way i mean we were when we were small uh, she used to hit me a lot <laughs> we just fought okay. i went to sneak away and just went crying to mom and <laughs> got like privileges and things like that and my sister was just mad at me because i was the annoying little sister <laughs> who got to do what she wanted yeah but then i mean little siblings yeah <laughs> but then i mean then we just i mean we both grew up and when we realized we both have our we have our lives, we we don't really talk much. Mm. But that's not because we don't like each other or anything like that. It's just because we're very busy on mm. on both sides. So yeah. we know that when we pick up the phone and actually talk to each other, it's just it's everything's normal, everything's yeah. fine. Nice. Like what's going on with your life, what's going on with my life. Yeah. Okay. I'm at the end of my list. Did we forget something important? No, I still I, want to tell you. I just think like uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, statistics about uh, mental issues and, you know, more suicides amongst uh, those adopted and stuff. Mm. And uh, yet at the same time, you get to hear like all your uh, childhood that you should be grateful. Mm. And that's something I don't really agree with 100%. I mm. think the parent should be thankful to take care of a kid, yeah. not the other way around ever. Mm. Yeah, I agree. You didn't choose your mm. parents. No. no. Yeah. Yeah. But I've heard parents saying, but I didn't choose this child as well. Not my parents, I should say, point out, but I've heard other people have had that said to them. But yeah. basically they did. <laughs> well, not my parents, but no, I not, mean, yeah, someone else, though, yeah. their children. Like, yeah. Well, I didn't choose you exactly. And I'm thinking, no, you didn't sculpt a child. No. You didn't choose no. like what, yeah. how they are, but it's, it's just, your child. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, that is horrible. <laughs> yeah, I heard about... Uh, a woman from India uh, that was adopted by two parents in Sweden and uh, they uh, separated and the father didn't want to talk to her again mm. because mm. it wasn't his daughter and you know if you adopt someone that's your yeah. daughter yeah. you can't Absolutely. choose that yeah. unchoose that and say no that yeah. was her decision mm. then that kind of stuff makes you very angry absolutely mm. yeah okay okay mm. thanks so thank you very much for joining me thank you it was a very uh, heavy, yeah, heavy <laughs> subject, yeah. subject but nevertheless really really interesting and i think i learned a lot and so thank you and goodbye bye hmm?